So uh, we're going to be taking a look at network traffic analysis with Wireshark. So the objective here is to analyze malicious network traffic with Wireshark and of course, uh, essentially identify uh, important variables uh, in regards to, uh, you know, malicious network uh, activity. So, you know, it, uh, with the exercises that we'll be exploring, uh, we'll essentially be trying to identify what system was compromised or what user was compromised, their IP address, uh, the IP address of the C2 server being used by the attacker, and essentially just building or getting an idea of what happened, because that's going to be your job if you work in, you know, in the blue team. All right, so what will we be covering in this video? So this is a high level overview. We'll get an introduction to Wireshark. Uh, I'm going to be explaining PCAP files. And of course, that will also be explained uh, as we progress through the practical demonstration side of this video. We'll also take a look at how to install and configure Wireshark, how to customize the Wireshark layout, how to perform live traffic capture with Wireshark. Uh, you know, we'll also be exploring capture and display filters. And we'll also be exploring, uh, you know, taking a look at how to analyze malicious traffic in the form of PCAP files. Um, so, yeah, hopefully this is a well-rounded. Now, one thing that I want to state before we actually get started is the fact that Wireshark is a very complicated or, you know, very, very useful tool uh, that has a ton of functionality. And I'm essentially streamlining this video to cover the content that is useful, uh, you know, from the perspective of a security analyst or, you know, from the perspective of um, of an individual who works uh, in the blue team. So uh, with that being said, we can actually, uh, you know, get started by taking a look at some of the prerequisites for this particular video. So you should be familiar with Linux and the various command line utilities pertinent to Linux. You should also have a, a good understanding of Windows in regards to, you know, malware infections, uh, etc and uh, you know uh, just the various file formats so you should have an understanding of what a portable executable is a dll etc if you're new to malware especially windows malware be sure to check out our malware analysis bootcamp uh, you also need a good understanding of the osi model and the layers that make up the model as i said uh, this is going to be a very advanced uh, this is a very niche uh, type of topic. So I'm going to assume that you're already familiar with the OSI model and the layers that make up the model. If you're not familiar with it, please take a look at our penetration testing bootcamp playlist on the YouTube channel. We have gone through and have covered, uh, you know, the OSI model, uh, as well as the TCP three way handshake. So in addition to uh, having an understanding of the OSI model, you also need to have a functional uh, knowledge of TCP IP and UDP as these are the most common uh, you know, protocols that you'll typically be working with or, you know, working, um, working around. Uh, you should also be familiar with a few information security concepts. So, if, you know, if this is your first uh, time uh, working in or, you know, getting an idea as to what information security is, then I would recommend going back and uh, taking a look at the pen testing bootcamp playlist. You also need to have a familiarity with HTTP and web technologies because, again, some of the traffic we'll be analyzing is going to be HTTP traffic. All right, so let's get started by getting an understanding of what Wireshark is. All right, so Wireshark is a free and open source network protocol and traffic analyzer that can be used to capture network traffic, troubleshoot networks, and much more. In essence, Wireshark allows you to capture traffic on a network and presents the captured traffic in the form of individual packets for granular analysis. Wireshark captures and dissects packets on a network and displays the various packet fields and headers based on the type of packet that was captured or the type of packet uh, that you have clicked on or selected. All right, so simply put, Wireshark allows you to, uh, to essentially you know, capture traffic on a network. Now, the means through which you capture traffic on a network are going to depend on, you know, what type of um, what type of um, what type of access you have to a network. So in this video, we're not really going to be focusing on capturing live traffic, uh, but we will be exploring that in order to explain a couple of things. Now, uh, whenever you're capturing traffic, you're, you're doing so through an interface, which is essentially the nomenclature that Wireshark uses to describe a network interface card. So when you're capturing traffic, you're going to be capturing traffic through your network interface card. So you could uh, you could be using Ethernet or a wireless adapter, 
or a Wi-Fi adapter for that matter. And based on your interface, uh, this will essentially change or uh, affect the type uh, and the quantity of traffic you will capture. So if you're using a wireless adapter that doesn't support monitor mode, which allows you to capture traffic uh, for other devices on a wireless network, uh, then you'll not be able to capture that traffic. So if you are performing wireless traffic uh, capturing or you know wireless traffic capture, uh, you need a wireless adapter that can uh, essentially be uh, that uh, can essentially be set to monitor mode. If you are on an Ethernet uh, connection or a local area network, then you know you can pretty much capture all the traffic that's running through the network, which is again what we'll be using in this case. All right, so I spoke briefly about packets because that's what uh, Wireshark captures. That's what it does. It captures packets. So what's a packet? Uh, also known as an IP packet. That's what I'm referring to. So a packet is also known as a network frame. All right, it is a piece of data sent over a network, right? So what does a packet contain? Well, a packet contains data. However, what we're really going to be focused on in regards to a packet are the various headers and fields that are used to specify what type of packet it is, the source and destination IP address, as well as the protocol. So, uh, you know, you can think of a packet as sort of like a car, right? And, uh, you know, the car has uh, a source where it came from. So your address and the destination is wherever you're going. So in order for a packet to be sent across a network, the, uh, the two important pieces of information that are required are the source IP address and the destination IP address. And Wireshark allows you to view all of these headers for each individual packet, which is fantastic, right? So uh, in the case of Blue Team Operations, we're primarily interested in the actual flags uh, to a certain extent, uh, the source IP address, the destination IP address, the data contained within the packet, as well as the protocol. So, you know, we want to know whether it's HTTP, uh, it's whether it's a TCP uh, packet, uh, so on and so forth. So, again, as I said, if you don't have an understanding of networking, then again, this is going to be this is going to be quite overwhelming. But uh, hopefully, you'll get the idea as we progress. All right. So, Wireshark for blue teams. In the context of blue team operations, Wireshark is typically used to analyze previously captured traffic that's stored in the form of a PCAP file for analysis and threat identification. What does this mean? Uh, as a threat analyst, if you will, if I can just use that very vague role as, a, as an example, uh, you will typically be given PCAP files to analyze. So, you know, you'll be told, uh, you know, for example, if you're working for a company, there, there may be uh, an infection and uh, as, uh, as part of your job, you'll be provided with the actual traffic capture uh, during that duration and you'll be told to find out what happened. So, uh, you know, in companies that have a security infrastructure in place, traffic is constantly being captured and is being stored in a PCAP file. Now, I'll explain what a PCAP file is. And as a blue team, uh, as a blue team uh, specialist or operator, you will be required to use uh, a tool like Wireshark to essentially analyze this traffic and identify what happened. So Wireshark can be used to identify when a packet was sent, the source and destination IP and the type of protocol in addition to the source port and destination port. Now you might be asking yourself, why is this information important? Well, this information is very useful for security professionals as it can be used to identify malicious activity by pinpointing the time the attack was performed or the time uh, the attack took place, which is very important, as you can obviously imagine, the type of the attack. So in, in, that, in, in that regards or uh, in, in regards to the type of the attack, your, your job is essentially going to be review the data sent within a packet and uh, try and form a chain of events in regards to what happened. Uh, so, you know, for example, if, uh, if the type of infection or the type of attack that uh, affected a particular employee uh, within a company was, uh, was through a phishing email, your job is to try and identify what type of, um, of file was it that essentially facilitated the attack? Was it a spreadsheet that had a macro, so on and so forth? And of course, the IP addresses that were targeted or involved in the attack. So you'll typically be required to identify the system that was compromised and the, uh, if uh, applicable, the C2 servers of the 
uh, you know, the C2 servers of the attackers and uh, essentially where the malware connects to. So this gives you and uh, the actual blue team an idea of what happened, uh, what malware was used, when the attack happened and what systems were compromised and uh, what IP address or, C or C2 server the malware communicates with. All right, so uh, let's get an idea of some of the features that Wireshark offers. As I said, it offers quite a lot of features uh, and it's not just limited to the blue team. Uh, you know, network administrators, system administrators all use it for various reasons. Uh, one of the most important features is the live traffic packet capture, uh, packet dissection, the ability to import and export ca captured traffic or objects, which we'll be exploring a robust capture and display filters to essentially filter through and find exactly what you're looking for, the ability to search for individual packets based on various parameters uh, like the source IP address or the packet number, uh, the ability to customize the color codes uh, for packets based on your own requirements. We'll, we'll be exploring all of this during the practical demonstration. All right, so that's uh, essentially what we're going to be working with in regards to the Wireshark features. Now, what are PCAP files? PCAP, which stands for Packet Capture, is an API that is used to capture and record network packets from layer 2 to 7 of the OSI model. Wireshark utilizes the PCAP file format to capture and store packets for later analysis. So whenever you're performing, uh, whenever you, you're, you're performing live uh, packet capture with a Wireshark, you have the ability to export or to save what you've captured into a PCAP file. You can then share that PCAP file with someone else and they can analyze what happened, which is fantastic, right? So network traffic captured with Wireshark can be exported or imported in the form of a PCAP file. This allows analysts to import and analyze network traffic that was captured on another network at a different time, which is, uh, you know, really, really cool. So what you'll typically see happening is, let's say a company gets attacked and, uh, you know, nowadays we have crowdsourcing malware analysis and packet uh, analysis. So what you can do is upload that PCAP capture onto a platform that offers that service and you can have security analysts or from all around the world uh, import that into Wireshark, analyze it and provide feedback in regards to what they think happened. So uh, that's one of the really cool things with PCAP. You can essentially identify what happened on another network at a different time. All right, so in terms of installing Wireshark, uh, Wireshark is a cross-platform, uh, is cross-platform, which means it's available for both Unix and Windows. When I say Unix, I mean uh, Linux operating systems, uh, Unix itself, BSD, uh, in addition to Mac OS, and of course, Windows. It's uh, free and open source, so you can download it from the following uh, URL, that is wireshark.org. All right, the lab environment. Now, uh, the techniques demonstrated in this video have been performed on Ubuntu 20.04. So that's the system that I'm going to be using. Now you can uh, use whatever Linux distribution you're comfortable with. If you're using Kali Linux, that's perfectly fine. Uh, one thing to note is that, uh, you know, given the malicious nature of the traffic or the packets contained within the PCAP files we will be analyzing, we do not recommend following along with these techniques on Windows as those PCAP files might be uh, you know, flagged as malware because they contain references to specific URLs and files and Windows Defender or any other EDR or antivirus solution will essentially flag them as malware. So I would recommend following, following along with the techniques highlighted in this video within a Linux environment. Uh, as I said, feel free to use any Linux distribution you are comfortable with. Now, the PCAP files used in this demonstration are available under my own GitHub repository. Uh, the name of the repo is Wireshark Traffic Analysis. The link is attached to this slide. It is also going to be attached to the description section so you can check them out for yourself. I just want to take a couple of moments to thank our Patreons. Thank you, Michael Hubbard, Dustin Umpress, Jerry Speds, Doozy, Sid Saab, Ryan Carr, Shamir Douglas, Jojo Bibi, Balangos, Kushkev, RS, Nino Buikov, and David Bricker. You guys are really awesome. Thank you very much for supporting us. And you guys make these types of videos possible. So we really appreciate it. And we look forward to producing even more high quality content.